Let's have a look at uh, what are called BLS signatures and key sharing. And it uses a concept of uh, crypto pairings. Okay, so before we start, let's look at some of the basics of elliptic curve cryptography. So what we have with this is that we define a point on the elliptic curve. This is an X, Y point of G. So this is our base point or our generator point. We then generate a, a gradient for that and that gradient is our private key. So this is a 256 bit uh, encryption. Uh, this is a 256 bit random uh, value. So this becomes our private key. We then multiply this private key with the G point to get our public key. The public key itself has two, uh, an X and a Y uh, coordinate. And then once we have our public key, so our public key is equal to our privileged times G. Although we know G and although we know P, it is very difficult to find out what the multiplier, what the scalar was that we used to be able to generate the public key. So in this presentation, we'll be looking at how we can sign using elliptic curve methods, using the BLS signature, and also how we can create a shared party key between three entities. At the core of the BLS method is the bilinear mapping. And with that, we have our normal algebraic operations. So A plus B is equal to B plus A and A times B plus C is equal to AB times BC and A times C, AC plus BC is equal to AB times C. So these are our normal mathematical operations and what we try to do with the bilinear mapping is to be able to find uh, our, our key, our point mappings that will allow us to be able to uh, still operate on these basic algebraic uh, methods. So we have a, a pair, our, our, our pairing, and it's defined by this E function here. So the E function will allow us to, to be able to take two values, P and Q, and operate them on in the same way as we do with our algebraic methods. In this case, if we take the function E and we take P and Q plus R, that's equivalent to this one here. And we'll say uh, E to PQ times E to the PR. So that's just the same as what we have over here. The same again, if we do P plus S Q, then that's equal to P e of p of q and e of s of q. Again, it's the same as this one here. So we must try and find a function that will allow us to be able to do that. And we can swap our multiplies with uh, um, our pluses for multiplies and still end up with the same operations. So to give you a simple example, let's say we use this function here, e uh, x y is equal to 2 to the power of x y. So if we take values of 5 and 6, we'll just check to see if this works for us. So the function 5 of 6 here, uh, we take that, and that becomes 2 to the power of 5 times 6. So that's 2 to the power of 30. So that works. Now we'll try something like this. So the e of 6 plus 2, this should be the same as this one. So that's equal to 5, 4, and 5, 2. They're multiplied there. And if we do that calculation again, we end up with 20 here and 10 here, and we get the same operation. Okay, so this should work. So our bilinear mapping should allow us to be able to do these types of operations. So let's look at, at more detail at what the BLS uh, signatures, how the BLS signatures are actually created. 
With this now, we use elliptic curves rather than simple integers as we saw before. And then what we have is this with this E function, we take a point P and a point Q and we'll generate a value N. So P and Q can be on the same curve if we want, or they could be on different curves. So it doesn't have to be on the same curve. Only certain curves will actually work. So in this case, we end up with P of Q is equal to N. So that's our function that we have here. And as we saw before, they should, uh, they should integrate with the bilinear mapping of the methods. So this means that uh, E of XP of Q is the same, will give us the same as P and XQ here. And then we can generalize this by taking this, if it's APBQ, then that can become PABQ, become ABQQ, and ABQ to the power of AB. So it is this function here, and if we uh, support this for our, our pair mapping an elliptic curve, then we can perform some amazing operations. So this is how we actually sign with inside our BLS signature. Initially we take a private key, so if it's Alice that's signing a message here, then she'll generate a random value A, 256 bits, for her private key. She then creates her public key as A times the G point. So the G point is well known to everyone, and that will create her public key, or P in this case. So P will be shared uh, to prove the signature. The a great advantage of BLS signatures is that now we now take the message and we take a hash of the message, that's 256 bits, and we multiply that value by the private key to get the signature. The signature will then be a point on the elliptic curve. We may have to modify things a little bit to make sure that the signature fits onto the elliptic curve, but the x value will, will be a point on the elliptic curve. And then we end up with a message, a signature, and a public key. The signature is then checked if we take our method of G and S, so G is the point and S is the signature, and make sure that that is equal to P, the public key, and the hash of the message. And this works because if we expand G of S, then S is this here, A times the hash of the message. We then, on the other side, take uh, our P, uh, sorry, we can take the A here and put it over here, become A times G and the hash, and then we eventually end up with the same as this one. Again, this way we can create some very simple and short signatures. So here's an example here, we're using the BN254 curve. This is uh, all our operations are done with this order. So it's a prime number. And we make sure that every operation is done to the mod of that number. So this is Alice's secret key here, 256 bits. She then takes the message, which is hello in this case, and then multiplies the hash of the message times A, our secret key. And from there she gets our signature. This is a very small signature, only 33 bytes uh, long. And it's the X coordinate of the elliptic curve value that we take here. And then to check, we do that operation. And as we've just seen, that's the same as that. So let's look at uh, an example of this. Okay, so we'll take our message as hello123. We will generate a random value, which is going to be the secret key, 
256 bits, we then end up with our public key, which is the A times the hash of the message, and a signature, and then we'll prove it. So the message itself is much shorter than our normal SNOR or ECDSA uh, signatures. In this case, for those signatures, we end up with an R and an S value, and we can see there they are much longer than our signature that we received for our BLS signature. One of the great advantages of uh, BLS signatures is that we can aggregate the signature into one signature and could store that. So in this case, we have multiple messages. So they might be different Bitcoin transactions. Let's say there was a hundred transactions in a certain block. Then by taking each of the public keys, <coughs> we can sign each of the messages. And then we can aggregate them together simply by adding the signatures and end up with this overall signature. We then verify here with this. We take each public key and a hash of the message and multiply them together. And we should end up with the same value as E of G S T. So in this way, we can aggregate our signatures. Where it gets even more powerful is that when we can aggregate our keys together. So in this case, we're signing a single message. So it might be that there are 100 signatories to a Bitcoin transaction. So it could be a company that uh, has 100 uh, investors and they want to uh, all sign this message and be proven to have signed part of it. In this case, we can take each public key and we can simply again add them together to create an overall public key. We take the same for our signatures and we add all the signatures together to create an overall signature for each of the signers. We then easily verify by taking the public key and the hash of the message here and prove that it's the same as E of G S T. So we have one signature and one public key. So this could have great advantages for our cryptocurrencies such as in bitcoins where we can see there are there are often many signers onto a single transaction. In this way we can make sure that all the signers uh, can actually have their public keys aggregated together and then stored as a single public key along with the aggregated signature. Another application that we can uh, use with these crypto pairs or the bilinear maps is with uh, uh, key sharing. So in this case what we do is we take paintings for uh, these two A and uh, two values and we create a, a, a pairing value. So in this case we use the uh, the methods that we saw, we saw before into merging uh, the values together. So in this case we're creating a shared key for Bob, Alice and Carol. So Carol transmits her QA value so QA, she takes the two uh, curves, or the different points in the curves, if we want. But she'll take two curves here, two curve values, uh, G1 and G2. She multiplies the first curve with A, her secret key, to give a PA value and a QA value. Uh, Bob does the same, takes the two curve points and then multiplies by his uh, secret key private key gets two points and Carol does the same with the two curves that she has, two curve points to give these values. So then they broadcast these values and in this case Bob takes his private value and then takes a key pairing between uh, Alice and Carol 
for these ones here and they should all end up with the same uh, key uh, which is uh, related to uh, A, B, C. Here is some code here that actually does this. So there's the random values for A, B and C. Uh, we then calculate the uh, each value for Bob, Alice and Carol. This is Alice's values for a public key. There's Bob's and there's Carol's. So we take the A value and multiply it by the G1 and the G2, as we do here. So there's the G1 and G2. And we multiply this point with the A value to give us this here. We do the same. We then move them back and forward, do some calculations, and then hopefully at the end they'll end up with the same uh, key. And if it is, then we'll get a message to say that everything is, is okay. Now let's illustrate this. So it might take a little minute to both generate the the pairs. And there we go. So there's the value of A, B and C. These are the uh, keys that are being generated. And then in the end, we end up with the same key. If you're interested, this is the G1 point that we're using, and this is the G2 point. Okay, so there's the results that we have here. There's the private key for Alice, Bob, and Carol. There's an example of the PA and the QA value that are generated from those two points that we just saw, and then we share and hopefully we'll end up with the same key. Okay, so that's been an introduction to BLS signatures and, and key sharing using crypto pairs.